hack and slash that is completely false and that's the reason why this player is not good at this game it's all revealed to us right here in this comment there's no doubt that elden ring has had a phenomenal first week and that goes for reviews and sales alike it seems like fans are extremely satisfied with from software's take on the open world genre while still retaining that souls like feeling but like with everything in life, you can't please everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to jump down into the deep dark interwebs to find the lowest ratings of Elden Ring that we can find and try to talk about and understand these perspectives. Perhaps I'll offer some counter arguments or maybe I might even agree with a few of them. Let's jump right in. But before we jump into the negative reviews, I do want you guys to see that over here on the Steam page out of 103,000 reviews, it averages out to be mostly positive, which is really good for a game. And then over on Google reviews, you can see that the average is 4.3 stars or a four star. Now, the interesting thing about the Google reviews, as you guys can see, there's something going on here. The majority of the reviews are either five or one, and there's very few in the four, three, in two ratings and I don't really like to see this because it makes you wonder if these reviews are actually objective reviews or are all the five stars just souls fanboys and all of the one stars people that couldn't get past the first enemy that they came across in the game and then they ended up rage quitting so I do kind of wish there was more in the middle but this is also a little bit more fun for this video as you guys can see I am going to blur out the names of these individuals because I don't want to spread hate at any one person and if you want to offer your opinion on these opinions feel free to do so in the comment section Section, but try to be respectful there's a lot of shit going on in the world right now there's no reason to to make this a hate-filled comment section and also understand that people have different opinions that you have to understand the definition of what an opinion is and it doesn't mean that somebody's wrong if they don't align with the way that you view something all right so the first review here i'm not going to read everything in every single review but i will read a few sentences on PC, it's really the Dark Souls torture experience. Well, yes, on everything, any Dark Souls game is a torture experience. The mouse movement is so jittery. Now, I don't play on mouse and keyboard myself. Um, I tried it for a little bit, so I can't really speak on this too well, but I do know a lot of mouse and keyboard players and I haven't heard anyone say that it's jittery aside from the actual drops in FPS, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. It'll make you motion sick even on the slowest sensitivity, so yeah, that really sucks. If he's feeling sick while playing this game, it's definitely not for him. I do understand where he's coming from because once you start spinning around the boss, you start panicking, you're dodging in circles and circles, it can make you feel a little um, sick, but I would take a guess that the majority of people are not motion sick from, from the Dark Souls game. Half the keys aren't explained for the keyboard and then a little bit lower he also talks about just the keys being weird for this game and I do agree with this I think that from software kind of left out um, left out the mouse and keyboard players which is unfortunate because this game did come out on PC and a lot of new players are coming in they've never even used a controller don't have a controller for PC and things just are not explained well for mouse and keyboard and you also just see a bunch of controller schemes and pop-ups throughout the game and that shouldn't pop up if you're using mouse and keyboard so I think from software um, um, could have done much better in this regard riding on a torrent with target lock and the torrent is your horse if you try to look sideways the camera constantly fights you to look straight hence you can't see anything yes when you when you target lock onto something you're locked onto that target so you can't look straight if the enemy's not in front of you because you're locked onto the target so this doesn't quite make too much sense and the last thing i'll mention in this particular review is right here where this player says the longer i play the more unintuitive things i find like you can equip everything in the equipment menu except for magic spells so i'm going to stop it right there and just say that spells are not equipment you can find a spell or learn a spell and you can see the icon for it but it's not actual equipment it requires memorization from your character you have to go to the campfire and select spells to equip or change them yes this is true this is how spell memorization works like i said you go to the campfire and then during that resting period your character has the mental capacity to memorize a certain amount of spells and then for that given day they have access to those spells now the reason why you can't just have every single spell at your disposal is most likely for game balancing issues because as many of you guys know spellcasters tend to be really powerful in many games and this memorization system is a way to still allow magic users to have access to a wide variety of spells which is what magic users want but they can't necessarily use all of those spells at the same 
time. Now this does make logical sense to me, this memorization system, but you as a player just might not like it, which is which is fair enough. Some players want access to 4 million spells and being able to choose them at any given time, and that might work for some games, but the Souls games are not designed for that, nor are many other games. In Dungeons & Dragons, you only have access to a limited amount of spells. If you're playing a spellcasting class that has a wide variety, oftentimes you can only choose a certain amount of them to take with you on that given day. It's a system that really helps with game balance and it encourages magic users to have to prepare better for different situations. Moving on to the next one star rating. This has to be one of the most overhyped and misrepresented games I've seen during my tenure playing video games. I am by no means a professional. I don't think anybody thought you're a professional. It doesn't make you a professional just because you've played video games for a while. Just putting that out there. I enjoy everything from FIFA to open world games like Red Dead, The Witcher, and Skyrim. Um, those last three games are excellent games. It's great to hear people praising them. I felt this game was promoted almost as a hybrid of some of those mentioned, except of course for FIFA. As someone who part of my job um, is video game research, I've never seen this game ever promoted as a hybrid to The Witcher in Skyrim. Never. The only similarities that I knew the game was going to have was the game being open world and then of course the fantasy RPG setting I guess you could say. But just because a game is fantasy and open world it doesn't mean that the gameplay mechanics and the narrative design and all of that stuff is going to be the same as another game. If you did any research, even just one article, you probably would have known that this game is going to be a Souls game at its core. And Souls games are known for difficulty and also known for not holding your hand along the way. You have to figure a lot of things out. I mean I feel bad that this person uh, thought it was going to be Skyrim or The Witcher, but this is just a lack of actually doing real research because I've never seen anybody say that this is going to be a Witcher and Skyrim hybrid. Elden Ring has no storyline, no real tutorial, an open world where you can die almost immediately, hell yeah, and have to restart, no apparent quests or side quests, and really no attraction or stickiness to the game, of course, unless you're a diehard fan to the genre. The open world is boring and feels like a copy and paste of the same enemies. Weird looking knights with no affiliation or meaning. So saying that the open world is boring is obviously an opinion and we can't tell this player that they weren't bored while they were playing, that's how they feel. So you have to respect that opinion. This game is obviously just not meant for this player. In terms of enemies feeling like they are copy and pasted, I would fathom a guess and say that this player didn't make it out of the starting area. I could be wrong, but one of the biggest appeals of the Souls games is coming into new areas and discovering new creatures that have new attack patterns, new animations. This is what makes the game so difficult. You don't have a lot of copy and pasted enemies. You constantly have to learn the animations of new creatures that you come across. Not to mention that the aesthetic and the visual appearance of the new creatures that you come across is also just really cool and one of the highlights of the Souls games in my opinion. You come across alien looking creatures, monstrous beasts, weird looking wildlife this is all part of the souls game so i definitely have to disagree with that statement elden ring has no storyline in my opinion is factually incorrect um there absolutely is a storyline i think i know what this player is trying to say here but you can't just say elden ring has no storyline because there absolutely is a storyline and there is an objective and there is a goal and there are actually side quests you just have to play and pay attention. From Software likes to deliver their narrative much differently than many other games out there like The Witcher and Skyrim. There are some cinematics and there are interactions with NPCs, although not nearly as much as many other RPGs. Now, the benefit to that is when you do get a cinematic or you do get to talk to an NPC, it has that much more excitement and importance behind it. It truly matters when something like that happens as opposed to just talking to a million people and getting a million side quests and 90% of it not even having any significance. So make sure that you pay attention during the cutscenes that you do get and also really value those NPC interactions. Now with that said, not everybody's going to be able to do that or if you're like me, you just don't take in everything that an NPC is telling you and then you forget and then sometimes you can't actually have them necessarily repeat what they told you and that can get frustrating. I do think that Elden Ring could have benefited from having maybe some sort of journal. I don't want a full journal like in Skyrim or The Witcher just a really small journal that maybe gives you like a one sentence description of what an NPC told you. It makes sense because you as a character could take notes in the game as you're progressing. I think that you could benefit from that. So I do understand why some players feel like there's no storyline, but there is a storyline. It just might not be told in the way that you prefer for your RPGs. 
Another thing that might confuse some players is the open world nature of this game. While in many other games, in the open world, you have objectives when you're exploring. In Elden Ring, sometimes your actual objective is simply to find better weapons and gather up runes to make your character more powerful. So if you look at this bottom section of the map, you might not have a quest telling you to go there, but you should go there and explore to try to find better equipment and become more powerful so you can actually take on the main quest. And the main quest is somewhat represented on the map by these gold rays but sometimes you just go out and you just explore and a lot of players really like that freedom of not always having to go on a pointless side quest but instead the world just being open to them and they can kind of craft their own story aside from the actual main story and this is one of the most beautiful things because no player has the same experience as another player some people might go to the north of the map some people might discover the underdark early on some people might find a really powerful weapon that most other people don't find there's just so many possibilities with this you just have to remember that there is a main objective and also some npcs do give you side quests but you have to really pay attention i do think from software might have been able to do a better job just explaining this in the style of this game and telling players that it's okay to not have an objective at all times and it's okay to go into the open world in any direction that you want and when players don't know that that's okay they oftentimes think that things are pointless but it's really really important to go explore the open world and level up your character and find things no real tutorial i think is a common complaint especially for new players what do you guys think do you think from software should put like a little mini battle arena that you can click on before you go into the main game like it's completely separate from the main game or do you guys like the way that they do it i'd be curious to hear your thoughts on that i think as this game is opening up to more players with its open world nature i think they probably could have done a little bit more in the tutorial department i know there's a little something but you know this game is already extremely difficult i think it's okay to beef up the tutorial just a little bit an open world where you can die almost immediately and have to restart this is just a staple of souls games and if you did any research you would probably know that that's how elden ring was going to be personally i'm a huge fan of this style um, the bosses don't respawn and some of the mini bosses also don't respawn but all of the regular enemies respawn and they do this so the world is constantly dangerous and it's not just empty and also so that you as a player can go back and farm those enemies and practice on them and level up your character and to wrap up this particular review i was anticipating an open world with vibrant npc characters quests and side quests the ability to build and level up your character without dying every 15 seconds i don't have to read anymore um this player is not meant for souls games that's very very clear and i wish that they did their research before commenting this because they would have known that this is not a game for them it's quite clear this video is going on a lot longer than I expected, so I'll try to do a couple more and then we'll wrap it up. To be fair, I never played any of the Souls games before, so I was not aware of how the co-op feature worked, but I have to say that it's terrible. I intended to play this game with two other friends and we quickly found out that you need to craft an item to play co-op, but when your friends join you and one of you dies, then you are all immediately sent back to a single player and have to repeat the process of joining a friend's session again. Incredibly time consuming, etc. So I actually understand where this guy is coming from because when I tried to co-op in Bloodborne, which was my first Souls game, I was very, very frustrated. Eventually, I just realized that it's a totally different system. I'm assuming that they do this for game balancing reasons. They don't want to make co-op extremely easy. It has to be somewhat of a chore to get somebody to help you defeat a boss, which makes the game much, much easier. But I don't know, I wish that From Software did make it more clear to people that are coming in with the mindset of playing with their friends that there's is kind of a fairly complex system behind it. You don't just group up in matchmaking and then go into the world together. So I would actually like them to be more upfront with that. Anytime somebody comes into one of my streams or comments on a video, I always say, if co-op is your objective, just do your research before you buy it for that reason because it is a very very different co-op system than most games that people are used to this one star says for the pros the graphics are decent for cons no storyline whatsoever that i could find in six hours so yeah i understand why people are saying this and just the style of souls games is just not for this type of player because like i said there is a storyline and part of the mystery in finding it is part of the enjoyment that many players get from this game you're thrown into the game with no guidance no map no quest line to follow i understand where this player is coming from but once again this is a style that a lot of players like myself really enjoy 
doing and having games that are actually like this. Too many games are yellow brick roads now and just tell the player everything they need to do. There's a helping hand walking you along the way. You can basically play so many games and just be brain dead these days and just not even think about anything and you're just kind of going through the motions. Now some of those games are still great because they have immersive storylines and the combat might be fun, but it's nice to have games that don't hold your hand along the way. So I'm actually happy that From Software has their game like this. Do I think they might be able to improve on it a little bit to open up to some more players? Probably yes, but I think this is actually a pro instead of a con, and this player, um, in their opinion, thinks that it's a con, and I do respect that. The game automatically assumes you're using a controller PC, so once again, I think that this should have been addressed on the initial release of PC. They could have done a better job. As a new to the franchise player, I just can't understand what's going on. The game is just too difficult to the point that you can actually die in the tutorial area. Actually, you're kind of supposed to die in the tutorial area. 90% of players will die in the tutorial area. It's it's a different style of game. Maybe that's not the right way to start off players in Elden Ring to have them die, but I don't know. It gets me pumped up. I guess I'm just a different type of player. And then no difficulty setting for those who want to get on with a story rather than hack and slash. Hack and slash, that is completely false, and that's the reason why this player is not good at this game. It's all revealed to us right here in this comment. Hack and slash is what you can't do in this game. It is a game where every movement that you make has to be calculated in some way, shape, or form, and you have to study the animations of your enemies. Um, yeah, this guy just revealed why it's too difficult for him, so that actually makes sense. In terms of difficulty settings, this is just an age-old debate over whether or not souls should have difficulties. Personally, I like that there's no difficulty. I think there's something pure and beautiful about going into a game and not having that decision to make, just knowing that you're going to conquer this world in the exact way that it was designed and trying to figure out if you are worthy enough to achieve that victory. That is something that pumped me up to play these games and knowing that when I beat it, I'm part of a community where everybody played on the same difficulty because there is no difficulty. There's something nice about that. It's hard for me to explain, but I'm happy that there's no difficulty settings. This is what makes a Souls game a Souls game. You go in, you know what you're getting, and if you can achieve it, you've achieved something great, in my opinion. They're very difficult games, and if you beat one, uh, you, should, you should really be proud of yourself. Even though it's a video game, you should still be damn proud of yourself. This game sucks. It definitely teaches me to not pre-order games. Yeah, I would I would say that most people probably shouldn't pre-order games, so lesson learned. But to wait and watch reviews? Okay, I am a Skyrim fan. I also like Ghost of Tsushima. The battle and movements of your character are crisp and quick. In this game, I feel like my character is moving underwater. That's interesting because the Souls games are known for their combat and how well the combat system is designed, at least the most recent Souls games are. So I just have to disagree with that opinion, but once again, that's just a matter of opinion. The attacking is very slow and delayed. I don't know, I mean, if it's slow, it's because you're, that's the, the style that you're moving into with that character. You must be using a big ass sword or a giant axe or hammer. If you get the daggers or the hook claws, it's not going to be slow at all. And I think the delayed thing, I don't know, I think the delayed thing is coming down to people just being frustrated that they can't beat certain bosses or creatures in the game and they're, and they're blaming it on delay maybe there is some delay for some people i'm not sure i haven't really experienced it myself and the last thing i'll mention that a lot of the one star reviews brought up and some of the higher reviews too is that the game's fps will drop when you're on pc sometimes you'll be on 60 fps and then for a second or two it will randomly drop down to 15 or 20 and if this happens during combat this can equal to your death which is very frustrating in a game where dying means so much. So I do hope that they address this. The, a patch came out in the beginning that did make it better. And overall, for me on my PC, it doesn't happen that much. And the game is still very playable. But I understand why some people do think this is unacceptable. Hopefully they fix it soon. Apparently this is because of the anti-cheat software that you have to run when playing the game on PC. Whatever it is, hopefully they find a solution soon. So yeah, as you guys can see, the one-star reviews, are you can typically tell that it's not necessarily a bad game. It's more so these people don't like this style of game. And Souls games are very, very different from Skyrim and other types of RPGs. The style of not being guided everywhere you go or having quest logs and just extreme difficulty in a video game is not meant for everyone. But the people that it is meant for, you guys can see with all of the insane 
main reviews that are coming out, this game is truly special. And I stand really kind of around that four or five star rating myself. This will probably be one of my favorite games, at least over the past five years or so, past, possibly even into the next five years. I'm not entirely sure. I really am enjoying it. If you guys enjoyed this content, let me know below in the video comment. I didn't mean the video to go on this long, but it brought us here. So we're here and perhaps I'll do some more in the future. Catch you guys in the next one.